Hey guys, this is Killer Rob speaking, and today we are back in Automation, the car company tycoon game, with our little series that is about cre recreating technical designs for the car designer competition that was running over at Automation Games channel. And uh, yeah, today we are in the 70s. 70s light sports roadster. Um, that's probably a category fewer people should have problems with. But still, I think we were seeing some quite ridiculous power numbers and that is not something that you need in the 70s. But anyway, uh, let's get designing a good car. Well, first things first, uh, get the year down to... Not 72 maybe, but uh, let's start out with 79 and see where all the good cars are. Uh, it looks like... Oh, this one is perfect light sports car. No, but I mean... I mean, why wouldn't you take this one? This is just perfect. Look at that mid or rear engine, two doors, definitely not a Porsche, uh, or rather, as it's properly pronounced, Porsche. Yes, it's not a Porsche, um, but 1975, it's perfect. I mean, it's perfect, come on, it's perfect. So, how do we start out? Light sports car doesn't have to be fancy, okay? So we are going to start out with uh, steel. Steel is cheap. Steel is cheap and good. And monocoque, of course, for the chassis stiffness. Uh, chassis myster uh, mis material. It's the mis mystery material. The material. Uh, yeah, let's go. Galvanized steel. And oh, I don't know what the uh, best configuration for this one is, but I would think it would be mid transverse otherwise we could go rear engine but I'm not so sure I prefer mid engine especially for two seaters obviously um, because uh, well it's it has much better balance I don't want the engine to be hanging off my ass uh, as some some kind of car company that constantly does that which also designed this this body which we're currently not seeing anyway but Handling is of the utmost importance, and uh, that means double wishbone to me. Now we come into the fun part. No, boxes aren't available yet, but they're almost done. They're almost done. They're getting there. Um, so, engine block. Hmm, what do we want here? Probably I'm going for a V6, and a small one at that. It needs to be lightweight, though, so... And we're in the 70s. Oh, shit. Late, late 70s. That, that's not good. Uh, let me change that around real quick. We want to be in 75. That's where the body was released. Yes. I don't want to make a late 70s car, but rather mid 70s so that it comes out in the late 70s. And still all good. Nothing changed here. Engine family. Yeah. Okay. It went down with it. That's great. So um, just making sure that this is all good. Yep. No bugs here. Um, how large do we want to make it? And what do we want to put into it? I think a free valve. Or oh, do we want to go dual overhead cam too? Uh, no, no, I think we make it simpler. We don't need them, the power numbers. So this should be pretty good. Uh, we do make it full alloy and here we already see some kind of issue. Hmm. It's too wide. So that tells me instantly. Uh, no. Oh, it doesn't tell me anything instantly because the engine was still pretty large. Let's see how large we can make it. Oh, way, way, way larger than we need to. Uh, I'm aiming for something like 2.2 liters, maybe? And over square at that. So, there there we go. That should be pretty, pretty good. Let's go even shorter on the stroke and make up for it with some more bore. This is looking great. 2.2 liters, exactly. A very small V6. It doesn't have to be super powerful, but this thing will rev, and they love the revs. Oh well, it won't rev that high, because we do have only three valves here and an 81 bore. So, uh, the valves are pretty big, they can't move that fast, but it's still good enough. Uh, we do want to put in some... Let's see if we can get around using forged components. Uh, and I don't think it should be a forged component car. Uh, because it's still in a, in a more budget segment than where you would want to use forged stuff. 
Although you could argue that this category has so much focus on the engines, and we're talking about the light sports category, has so much focus on the engine that it is warranted to put in a um, slightly over specced engine. And I think we get around that because we are running a pretty large bore, which means that uh, we will get valve float reasonably early and we have a short stroke, so these components will not be overly stressed. That's my way of thinking here. Okay, compression. We will need to run well, maybe 8.5 and a decent-ish cam profile. You don't want to go overboard here. 60 should be plenty. Maybe drop it to 55. Uh, na neutral. Uh, neutral. <laughs> Naturally aspirated it is. No turbos here, no? Even though we could. We could make a super early turbo engine. Twin Turbo V6 in 1975. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, fuel injection. Uh, yeah, it's so tempting. It is so tempting, but we don't need that. Let's see how much power. Ooh, that's a lot of power. Maybe once. One. Twin barrel? Is that enough? Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably, and now I want to go with a small four barrel. I know it's uh, maybe a little. It's a little overkill, but I do want the tech that is in the four barrel. Uh, there's more, more controls for um, for throttle response and so on, which is important to an engine that is supposed to be sporty, right? Uh, DCOEs, yeah, they are nice, but you need to put on so much stuff, triple carb, uh, to be uh, to be accurate. Look at that. <laughs> uh, Nah, nah, that's getting a little too much. Just, it's just a little too much for a car like this. So, let's go with a single four barrel, not twin. Single four barrel, yeah, that's much better. Much better. Race intake, oh yeah. No, no, no. Okay, but uh, performance it is, because we want to hear the engine. And we run on regular 91 because 1975, right? So we don't want to run into any leaded bands, which are coming up shortly. Uh, we do want to have the responsiveness, so let's go down to 13.0. We do... Oh, yeah, we do need to optimize this. Um, pretty high-end-ish. 4,500, a bulge there. Uh, it would be bulging from 3.5 to 5.5, roughly. And I think that's a good place to put it. Our peak power will be slightly higher, but that will mean that we have a really nice power delivery band uh, for the, the entire high end. So the engine will never leave its uh, good rev range when you're shifting. No, because I think we are going to give this one five gears, five manuals. So, rev limiter. This one should be able to get to around 6.5 easily. I probably do want to put one or two points into quality here. Let's see if this is getting ridiculously expensive. Uh, how much difference? Oh, it's just 30 bucks. Yeah, 30 bucks and a bit of engineering time. We don't really care about the engineering time here. Not that much. Not if it's like a month. That's all within the range. That's not something that Killerob would pick up on uh, when it comes to judging. So that's all good. Um, and here, tubular. First time we use tubular headers in this mini-series. Uh, that is very much warranted in this case, I believe. No catalytic con converter. We are making a light sports car. We don't really care about the taxes so much. And they will be pretty vague uh, in this era still. It's very relevant to economy cars, but the two-way catalytic converter just kills everything. So that's not, not really an option. None, straight through. Finally, we have a straight through muffler. And, oh. Ah, beautiful Kerob! Why are you so good at this game? Hmm, I wonder why. Uh, this is just the perfect power number. This might even be a little too powerful. Although, no, late 70s, that's perfect for a light sports car, actually. It's absolutely spot on. Um, the Even the exhaust was spot on. And you can see here we have a very, very nice torque curve. Heavy bulge around the 4K mark. And that is exactly how we wanted to tune it. To tune it 4.5, yeah. Like there, it's pushing up from here to here, basically. It's pushing up. Very, very good power delivery. Okay, I, I think that's good so far. We have excellent flow bench results there. And now, my only question is, can we 
push the valve train a little more because we could get more revs out of this one. 7.4. So I was correct in assuming that we definitely don't need any uh, kind of forged components, but mm, yeah, 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 this this is a little higher than I expected. So what we can do here is check first how much... Uh, let, let's hold it. Let's hold the engine. And now we ramp this one up. And you see that would allow us to rev quite a bit more. It... Oh, wow. That's a big difference in engineering time. Man. But, I mean, the car is pretty fancy too, so... Maybe it's worth it. No, no, I don't think so. No, let's leave it at this. We don't need more power. Abandon held engine. Okay, here we go. So, engine is complete. I think this is a really good build for a light sports car. We select the only body. Also, it's a tiny light sports car. It is tiny. It's tiny. Let's see, where's the engine hidden? Hello? Engine? Oh! Oh, there you are. Aren't you fancy? Uh, transfers, rear wheel drive, yes, all the weight at the rear, manual gearbox, five gears, yes. Yeah, uh, we definitely do want that. Uh, we don't have a speed limiter, obviously, because there's no electronics for for that to uh, to actually work. Um, uh, estimated top speed, pretty high. Pretty high. I think we don't want to push it beyond 210, though. Uh... I would love to for it to only go to 200 because that makes our tires cheaper. Open differential, yes, yes, that's fine. And uh, no quality there. What about the spacing? Uh, I do want to have second gear to go to exactly 100 or 101 so that we get a good zero to 60 time. And yeah, 28. Yeah, it should be good. All right. So now radials. We definitely do need radials. I don't even know if we need sport tires, but probably yes. Let's see how expensive... Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. And that is at even sizing. You know, you need much larger tires in the rear. Uh, recommended width is 228. Okay, with the current load, that is that is a good number. And this recommended width, 175 then. Let's go to 175. That should give us a reasonable neutral balance. We do want the car to be neutral and these recommended figures give you a neutral um, steering behavior if... Uh, oh wow, this looks like a fat ass. Um, yeah, neutral steering behavior overall uh, for empty load. So, alloys, of course. Now let's check the pricing. 1,600. Our tires are so important. Let's see. Uh, is this better? Th we can save 350 bucks by 360 bucks even by um, just switching to medium compound we can try that later if we run into problems with budget so now for the rest of the tires they, they look a little small little small but this is the maximum size oh damn it uh 50s 50 65s in the rear okay uh we can't go any larger now we Oh, maybe maybe we can. Let's activate morphing here. And hello? Do you? Oh yeah, no, we can go larger if we want to. So what I might do here is to um, sit this one at 225s and try to go to 16s. Hello? Oh, this didn't even affect it. Oh, we can make it really sporty. Oh, that doesn't look error correct. <laughs> really doesn't look error correct. <laughs> Uh, but it's good. I mean, technically it's good. And they they actually were able to produce these tires back in the day. I, I know it because I calibrated it. I looked at, at classic tires, uh, European style, uh, Michelin, the, the ma manual with the, all their classic tires. And yeah, yeah, they were able to make uh, 45 profile tires back then. So no worries there. Okay, now vented disc. Oh, now this is great. That is why I really want to go for a mid-engine car here too, because that very much balances the uh, brake load between front and rear, which is super neat. Now, we only need a one piston, and I think we don't even need vented discs, but uh, I, I want to keep the option open. Uh, let's go with uh, 255s. 
front and rear. I think that should be enough. A uh, pad type 50 is around right. That's slightly sporty. Brake balance. Um, yeah. Well, it should be higher because it's uh, uh, more 50-50 because it, it has so much weight in the rear. I think here we can afford a semi-clad. Semi-clad on the tray. Although, a light sports car doesn't need to be fast. Maybe we want to make... Uh, Actually, we want to keep it cheap. A uh, light sports car doesn't have to have high top speed. And the under tray would do exactly that. And high top speed means more expensive tires. And we don't have that budget. Cooling airflow. Mm, another such a thing, yes. Okay, let's up it so that the car is slower and more reliable, which they also like in this category. They want a, a, an agile little sports car that's great in cornering, has decent acceleration and uh, that doesn't break on you and is just awesome to have around. No, no, not too much running costs of it. So now uh, let's remove those seats. We don't need them and put a... Oh, yeah, that, that is a thing. Yes, I think we are going with standard and basic. The light sports category isn't very fussed about uh, getting high-tech interior or like, like high high standard interior uh, or entertainment in there. Uh, it should be good. I think that is good. So, uh, no power steering. No, it's a super lightweight car. There's not much weight on the front, so steering will be lightweight. You don't need power steering. That's another reason for putting the engine in the rear for a light sports car. Very important. That's an overlooked aspect of uh, a, an advantage of mid and rear engine vehicles in this era of car. You don't need power steering for them. The steering weight you feel is mostly determined of how, by how much weight is on the front axle. And in this case, as long as you don't, as you don't uh, transport gold bars beneath your your bonnet, you're all good. Safety. Uh, who needs safety? Seven kilos of safety? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Standard 70s. Don't need more. Standard springs. Uh, gas mono. And... Let's see. Um, oh, that's that's a little hard. We have made an ultra sporty car. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. That is massively sporty. But it, this is without suspension tuning yet. Here we have the light sports category. And yeah, this is just crushing. You see, comfort, 4%. <laughs> okay. The suspension alone basically kills all comfort. Mm, all right, all right, all right. So first, let's give it a reasonable tune. Let's put it in sporty. Yes. Oh, this is looking beautiful. Beautiful. And there comes the comfort. Let's see. Oh, no penalty anymore. It has a minimum reasonable level of comfort for a light sports car now. It's not awful. It's just terrible. Uh, uh, all right. So that's great. Light sports, already what we are aiming for. And a light sports car, let's take a look, actually has higher weighting on drivability than sportiness. And we are doing uh, not very well on the drivability aspect. So let's increase this one as much as we can. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We don't even have a steering warning. And wow, our brakes are already set up super nice, even though I haven't retuned them. Uh, let's go back to the brakes and actually give them a run of tuning. They are slightly too perform... Oh, why is the pad type that high? <laughs> that wasn't planned, sorry. Yeah, much better. Okay, I wanted to have them at 50, not 79. Don't know what, what happened there. Why, why were they there? Um, anyway, so we do want to have a bit higher tuning like this and maybe slightly larger brakes yes it's getting there 75s mm, yeah and 75 there too and now we can go down a bit yes this is beautiful oh that was too much and now maybe a little bit of pad type oh yes Oh yes, a little bit of pad type is perfect. Now we're exactly at that. So if if you're driving on perfect tarmac, you can uh, just fully squeeze your brakes and you're exactly at, um, at grip level. So that's perfect. Very nice. 
and these numbers are starting to look a lot better and we haven't tuned the steering behavior yet that's all good uh, we have zero sportiness brake fade perfect no losses there and our comfort levels are now in a better range as well but where 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 is our light sports let's see how we're doing oh we are doing really well uh light sports is currently at 133 well, it's not bad still a little bit too much track car but we are going to change that with our tuning uh our tuning first let's do the rough tuning and that would be on the wheels they are different already so we don't really need we don't really need uh, to take into account that that will be more expensive. So let's go with 65s in, in the front. 165s in the front. Or even 55s. <laughs> 55s! Really? Light sports budget is coming there. Mm. That is making things worse though. Overall we have higher stats with... Uh, yeah... 75. Ooh. Ew. Why? Oh. Why is this one still the old... Right, hold the hold the trim, and revert to current trim. Okay, like this. I, I hope it's reset now. No, shit, we can't remove it. Oh, that's a bug. So because we don't have any pinning here in sandbox yet, so 133.5. Now let's see if I tune it further down towards drivability. What we get then? Actually, actually we might want to leave it there let's see how well are we scoring when we have this pretty much tuned to the maximum yes, we are not losing too much drivability this point doesn't move all that much so maybe i'm going with a tune that is like this very sporty it's more of a track car in that instance but it's yeah not really though not really though, it's just very well tuned and the, there doesn't seem to be anything better in the track car category. But this would be a little on the oversteery side. Oh yeah, yeah it is, uh, okay. Front sway bars, let's give it more grip in the rear. No, that is making it far worse. We were right at the edge there actually. And one more and it turns over. We're pushing it, we're pushing it there, it's collect okay. Maybe a little much. Uh, can we lower the car even more? Let's see. Oh yes, we can. Makes it even more sporty. And we're not losing... We're not losing a lot of uh, drivability either. Just tiny amounts, but we're making it... Whoa, wow. We're making it much better. Now let's see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, this looks like a proper sports car now. From just the, the stancing here. Slight camber. The suspension tuning is just spot on. All in drivability and uh, the least amount of loss possible for sportiness. And uh, let's just check our dampening. Uh, we could go a little higher in the rear. And that actually helped everything but comfort. Do we need that is the question. 138.8 we are at. And like this we are at... Oh, this dropped. Okay. Yeah, the yeah, more dampest it is. I. Uh, 42 so yeah okay we're around 0.4 then and more drivability more sportiness that's exactly what we wanted now let's tune our gearing slightly more now oh, this doesn't look too terrible doesn't look too terrible at all we don't have any wheel spin so we could make it even faster if we if we wanted to let's see what that does let's hold the trim and try to get third gear to 100 instead so that would be something like this, okay, and then we have wheel spin, 4.7%, nah, that is not great, that definitely is not a great choice. Now let's go back to where we were, which is basically there, yeah, much more solid. And now, the question is, let's take another look here, um, the question is, what more can we do? The answer to that lies in the detailed stats. And do we have anything that we forgot about? Gearbox? No, that's, this is drivability we're looking at. Gearbox? No, that's fine. Drive type? No, that's fine. Uh, circle test? Is fine. That's because it's so sporty in tuning. Steering? It's not too terrible. That is um, because we don't have power steering. We only lose 4.5%, which is great, actually, for a car like this. 
And, well, it's not good that we lose it, but the, the number is not too severe, which is great. Uh, so, let's see. Agility through the roof. This is amazing. Okay. Oh, these values all look amazing, actually. Plus 27.6% here. Comfort. Mm, uh, uh, nah. Not great. Not great. But uh, that is what we expect. Prestige. Well, we don't make any power, but you shouldn't make any power. And, oh well, yeah, we could ask the question if we want to have more power. And I think the uh, clear answer to that is, nah, we don't need more power, because that only makes it more expensive and not necessarily better at what it sets out to do. So, mm, no, no, that's fine. I'm good, thank you. Safety, all good. Practicality, we don't fucking care. Off-road, oh yeah, oh no, that's important. Minus 85. Ouch. No, not really ouch. 15 <laughs> liters per 100k. Could make it a little leaner, just to make it cheaper. But mm, no, that takes throttle response away and lowers our sportiness rating. We don't want that. So overall, I think we are pretty much spot on with this one already. It is scoring so well in so many categories. And... Well, I, I can't change the fact that there are no better designs for track cars, but this one definitely is a really well scoring light sports car. And even though it's super affordable, still in the light sports category, it's still scoring very well in the light sports premium category. So this, definitely a plus one for the scoring, Mr. Killerob. Very nicely done. Okay, before I forget, I think uh, we do need to send this car around the test track too. I mean, look at it. It just cries for the test track, as well as it cries for fixtures. But, um, that's... no, no, stop. Stop complaining. Okay. And... there we go. Oh, shit! Whoa! Holy smokes, this is... This is fast by today's standards. And 150 before the Vankal corner. And full G forces. And uh, let's see what. Ho, oh, oh, ho, <laughs> That is really fast. A 130 72. That is proper fast. Yeah, that's a great build. Alright. I think this wraps us up for today. I know, I haven't optimized my octane and stuff. It does, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You see how well we are doing. Alright, alright. So. Yeah, wraps us up for today. Hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time. <laughs>